Hello everyone. Hope you all doing well and welcome back to our Windows Server 2022 beginners video series on MSFT webcast. In this video, we will see the steps on how to install and configure IP address management feature in Windows Server 2022. IP address management provides the ability to deploy, manage and monitor IP address and name resolution infrastructure in your organization. IPAM automatically discovers NPS, DHCP and DNS servers on your network and enables you to manage them from a central interface. In a few words, we can say that the Windows Server IPAM role allows an administrator to monitor and manage IP addressing in a network. It provides a centralized view of IP address usage and offers tools to help manage IP address ranges and DNS records. Let's understand the test lab we will use in this video. We have single domain active directory forest named msftwebcast.com. We have two Windows Server 2022 domain controllers in our active directory domain. This is our root DC named SRT22-DC01. This is our second DC named SRT22-DC02. This VM is our Windows Server 2022 member server that has been joined to our Active Directory domain. The FQDN of this server is SRT22-SRV01.msftwebcast.com. On this server, we want to install and configure IPAM feature. Let's use Windows PowerShell to install IPAM feature on this member server. Right click on Start menu and select Windows PowerShell Admin. Type Simulate install hyphen Windows feature IPAM hyphen include management tools. Hit Enter key to install IPAM on this server. The installation process has been started successfully. This will take a few moments to complete the installation. The IPAM feature has been installed successfully on this member server. Let's refresh the server manager dashboard. Now that the feature is installed, server manager will display a new section in the left called IPAM. Click on IPAM and you are now presented with a set of six steps that need to be accomplished in order to use IPAM. The first step is already finished. We are connected to the IPAM server. Moving on to step 2, provision the IPAM server. Click provision the IPAM server. On the before you begin page, click next. To store its information, particularly that relating to the IP addresses, IPAM needs a database. We can use an internal Windows database or a SQL Server database. Here, we are going to use Windows Internal Database. Click Next. On the Select Provisioning Method interface, ensure that the Group Policy Based is selected. In the GPO Name Prefix box, type IPAM and then click Next. On the Confirm the Settings interface, click on Apply. Wait while the wizard applies the configuration. Provisioning will take a few minutes to complete. Click Close once provisioning is complete. From the server manager, we can see that the action is complete and the date when it was done. Go back to Windows PowerShell. We will use Windows PowerShell for provisioning the IPAM GPO. Let me type command CLS to clear the screen. Type simulate invoke hyphen IPAM GPO provisioning hyphen domain amaseptivewebcast.com hyphen GPO prefix name IPAM hyphen IPAM server FQDN SRT22 hyphen SRV01.msftwebcast.com. Now hit enter key to run this same delete. We will be required to enter Y and press enter four times to finish through this command. The command was executed successfully. Let me clear the screen. Let's manually update the group policy settings on this server by running command gp update slash force. Type command gp update slash force and hit enter key. 
the group policy settings has updated successfully. Let's go ahead and open the GPMC console to verify what has actually happened in group policy. On server manager, click on tools and select group policy management. Let me maximize the window, expand the forest, expand domains and expand the domain name msftwebcast.com. We can see three new group policies have been linked at the level of the domain, one for RTCs and network policy servers, one for DHCP and one for DNS servers. When we begin adding servers to bring them under management by IPAM, those servers will get added to the security filtering list for GPO so that only they will read and apply the group policy settings. At the moment, as we can see, the security filtering is empty for all these three GPOs. Let's close GPMC console. Go back to Saw Manager dashboard with IPAM. Our next task is to actually discover the servers that we want to bring under management in our IPAM server. And to do that, click on Configure Server Discovery link. Here, we can determine which domains we want to discover. Click on Get Forest to query Active Directory and find forest that IPAM server is in. This will launch our background task. Click OK. Close the Configure Server Discovery window. When the task is finalized, click Configure Server Discovery again. As you can see, our forest msftwebcast.com is selected. In my case, I only have one domain, the root domain msftwebcast.com, which is selected here. Click on Add to select the server rules that you want to discover. By default, domain controllers. DHCP servers and DNS server option is selected. So for msftwebcast.com, we want to discover which domain controllers do we have, which DHCP servers do we have and which DNS servers do we have. If I had multiple domains in the forest, I could specify all of the domains from here. Once done, click OK. Our next step is to run server discovery. So click on that link named Start Server Discovery. If you take a look at the More button, we can see that we are going through that IPAM Server Discovery task. Discovery may take around 5 to 10 minutes to run. Let's close the window. In yellow bar, we can see the message one or more IPAM task is running in the background. Please wait for their completion. After around 3 minutes, the yellow bar indicate that the discovery is completed. Once discovery completes, we will see which servers that we have actually discovered from this process. Now we can come to step 5, select or add servers. Click on the link select or add servers to manage and verify IPAM access. This will open server inventory and it looks like it has detected both domain controllers. Right click on server to manage and click on edit server. Change the manageability status to manage. Uh, let me select the DHCP server as well because we have DHCP server on our DC02. Uh, let me show you that. As we can see, we have DHCP service on our DC02. So we have selected DC, DNS and DHCP server for our DC02. Click OK. Right click on our second server SRT22-DC01 and select Edit Server. Change the manageability status to Managed. Click OK. We can see that the state of management facility has been changed to Managed but access to IPAM is still blocked. This is because the server still has not applied the GPOs. Before we continue, I would like to open Group Policy. Click on Tools and select Group Policy Management. We want to check the security settings of these GPOs to verify that our servers got security settings. We can see under Security Filtering that our domain controllers accounts are there. For DNS, we can see only one domain controller is there 
and same for IPAM DC and PS. Now we can wait for automatic group policy update or we can manually update the group policy settings on our both domain controllers. Go back to PowerShell. Uh, let me clear the screen. Type cmdelete and to hyphen ps session hyphen computer name. Type srt22 hyphen dc01 and hit enter key. Type command gp update slash force and hit enter key to update the group policy settings on srt22 hyphen dc01 domain controller. Type exit and hit enter key. Again type simulate enter ps session hyphen computer name srt22 hyphen dc02 and hit enter key. Again type command gp update slash force and hit enter key to update the group policy settings on srt22 hyphen dc02 domain controller. Type exit and hit enter key. The group policy settings has been updated successfully on both domain controllers. Go back to Server Manager dashboard. Right click on SRT22 DC01 and then click Refresh Server Access Status. It may take up to 10 minutes for the status to change. If you don't see green check mark, you can right click on the server and again select Refresh Server Access Status and refresh the page. Let's do the same for SRT22 DC02. This can take some time, so do not panic if you don't see them unblocked immediately. Let's click on Refresh to refresh the page. It took around 5 minutes. They are green and now IPAM is responsible for managing these servers. We will now have a centralized interface from which we can view information about Active Directory DNS and DHCP scopes. Right click on those servers and select Retrieve All Server Data to collect the information from those machines. This process doesn't take very long. Once we have that information, then we have a servers that we can then view under our Monitor and Manage dialog box. Uh, let me show that. But first, let's click on Refresh to refresh the Server Manager dashboard. Let me close this. Under Monitor and Manage, click on DNS and DHCP servers. As you can see, we have two DNS servers and one DHCP server. Click on DHCP scopes. Here we can see the DHCP scope information, scope name, scope range, and other configured DHCP server information. Click on DNS zones. Both Active Directory Integrated DNS Zones, msftwebcast.com and underscore msdcs.msftwebcast.com are visible to us. Now we can use this IPAM server to manage DNS and DHCP servers from this centralized management interface. That's all for this video on how to install and configure IP address management feature in Windows Server 2022. In the next videos, we will learn how to manage DNS and DHCP using IPAM. I hope you found this video useful. Please let me know in the comment section if you have any questions or suggestions. Thank you all for watching this video. Have a nice day.